I call the minister and the member for New England. Well, thank you very much, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the Labor Party. I'd like to thank the Labor Party and the Greens for coming up with such a dopey policy that they ended up in opposition. I'd like to thank the Labor Party and the Greens for standing behind that in such a way as they just churned through their leaders. I'd like to thank the Labor Party for the fact that they got themselves into such a position that they absolutely got annihilated in the election. I'd like to thank the Australian people for realising how stupid the policy was, and I'd like to thank um, the Palmer United Party for realising that we must honour our election commitment and scrap the carbon tax. As I've said before, it was nothing but a big new broad-based consumption tax, a broad-based consumption tax based on power to connect every household up to the Australian Taxation Office via something slightly above their skirting board called the power plug. Uh, from their, their lives, no matter what they did, in an inelastic form, they were going to pay more for it. Every time someone turned on I know, the electric blanket, the carbon tax was in bed with them. When they opened up the fridge, when they opened up the fridge, a little white light went on to remind them that the carbon tax had been with them all night. When they turned on the kettle, the carbon tax was having breakfast with them. When they went to work, um, the carbon tax, even, even for diesel fuel, because they still believe it, they should have a 6.85 cents a litre increase in diesel, diesel prices. Because, and then they turn on the photocopy and the carbon tax could replicate itself. Uh, they turn on the light, the carbon tax was in the office with them. It didn't matter what they did. If they, went on, if they, if they tried to fly away from it, the carbon tax was on aviation fuel, but only on the aviation fuel when they were flying away. They took another airline. It wasn't there. It was the most absurd idea, because they believed that they could single-handedly change the temperature of the, temperature of the globe. Well, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, how'd they go? How'd they go? Well, it might be going all right at the moment. It's been rather cold lately. We've got a bit of snow. Maybe it's working. Maybe it's working. Or maybe we were just being ripped off. Maybe we were just being ripped off, and maybe about, it's about time that this rip-off changed. And I stand by the fact that the other day we were in the chamber and, um, and the uh, member for Hunter said that, you know, that they still believed in terminating the tax. He said it. If you, can, if you go back to the Hansard, you can read it. You can read the comments that were happening. So there's still terminators there. There's still terminators, just that oh, well, they're sort of varying. And now we've got a bit of a schism in Nimbin because we've got the Greens on one side and then we've got sort of variant views on the Labor Party about where they are. I mean, this is the ultimate wedding present of the Labor Party and the Greens. It's their ultimate wedding present. It, it represents the matrimonial fit of the Labor and the Greens. It represents how the right wing of the Labor Party can be stepped on, stepped on by some of the mad antics that were proposed by the Australian Greens. And if we look at some of the other ridiculous combinations and permutations of this tax, this big new tax, this extra tax system, we had the case that if you got to 25,000 tonnes in an abattoir, 25,000 tonnes of carbon emissions, the moment you triggered it, you triggered a, an in excess of a $24 a tonne tax. That's that, that means that when you process that extra beast, it costs in excess of $600,000 to process it. And it costs an extra $600,000 to process it. And who, who came up with this stroke of genius? Well, they did. Well, they did. And they've written books about it. And they, you know, they're, they're still standing behind it. We've still got the member for Lilly, who still believes in it. They're all still here. But this is the tax, this is the policy that, if they want to stay, stand behind it, they'll, they'll just stay in opposition. They'll stay in opposition because the Australian people are not going to have the wool pulled over their eyes about this. Um, it is going to be um, rather interesting today to see whether the Labor Party and the, the Treasurer and the member for Grainler and the leader of the opposition forthrightly stand behind this dopey tax that they took to an election and got absolutely annihilated on, or whether they can actually see the light, see the reality that apparently even now, and God bless his cotton socks, God bless his cotton socks, the former Vice President of the United States of America also apparently believes it's dopey. It's dopey. So I don't know where your friends are these days. Where, where are they? Who still believes in this? Who is it? Well, it, it might be the shadow treasurer. Maybe he still believes in it. Um, who, else, who, who else could believe? We know, we know that some of the members from uh, Western Australia are not very keen on the idea at all. At all. But um, 
I think that it was a great, it was a great epiphany for the Australian people to realise that now it is quite apparent that the numbers are available to get rid of this ludicrous tax. This tax that did nothing about cooling the temperature of the globe, did everything about destroying Labor, the Labor Party and the Greens' chances of ever being in government. Your beer, it? It, was a, it was a tax on, as I said, it was a tax on cooling your beer. It's a tax on everything. A tax on everything that delivered nothing but absolute, unmitigated chaos.